Hey folks, time for another Q&A on Earth's disaster cycle. Let's jump right into it. The first question we have actually came from one of our one-on-one -on -one calls uh, where we get to talk to one of you observers on the phone, and it asked, things can't evolve in 12,000 years, right? Mm, well, here's the thing about our DNA. This random mutation thing probably is real. Aspects of evolution are probably real, like our thumbs, albino creatures in caves, but with specific energy levels, there are probably only certain ways that our DNA can organize itself, our DNA and our RNA. And so while this is a little bit of the ascension topic, to be clear, if you take the entirety of the uh, ascension stuff that is discussed online, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense. But this is one thing that does. When you change the energy level of the environment, there are probably only certain ways that the DNA can be organized, which is why, in addition to the rapid disappearance of species, you get the rapid appearance of new species as well. There was a great book on that by Robert Felix. Uh, rest in peace, my friend. Next question. Why are pole positions noted in the same place going back millions and millions of years? This is something we go over in the disaster movie, uh, in the disaster series. The world turns and turns back and turns and turns back. So there should be evidence of the poles in these locations time and time again over time. It's just that none of those records show, you know, actually show a continuous magnetic pole there. Uh, they just do have evidence of it tilting back and the pole returning to its original position after the world turns over and then turns back. Here's something really interesting. I have mentioned that I'm not planning to put much in a Faraday cage. Not only do I not think that um, it's practical to build one that can withstand a solar micronova, uh, it could melt and cause other issues. I do plan on putting things in plastic tubs, you know, plastic bins. You know, one of the big ones that, you know, maybe your kids throw their baseball gloves, soccer ball, football, basketball, and, you know, something like that. Just a big plastic tub. Electricity does not want to fight. The moment it sees an insulator, if there is any way around it whatsoever, it's going to take it. And in many ways, putting your stuff in something plastic is going to be just as good as putting it in a Faraday cage, possibly better. This was an interesting question, and it allows me to talk about something even more interesting. The question was, if the moon is slowly moving away from the Earth, and for those who don't know, it's moving a couple centimeters further away from the Earth every year, how could it be this close to the Earth after allegedly 4.5 billion years? Well, it is moving slightly further and further away year by year right now. However, any of you know who Ed Leed Sconen is? He built Coral Castle. Uh, he had the black box that disappeared. Uh, Probably the guy who knows Ed Leeds Scown, uh, Ed Leeds Scown in the best um, is a friend of mine. He has leedscounin.com, and on there there is a page about Ed Leeds Scounin's writings about the magnetic pole shift, and he says that the moon is going to come down in its orbit during the pole shift before coming back out, probably about halfway down, and so. Um, not only does that help answer the question initially about why the moon is so close after allegedly 4.5 billion years, but also this is something to consider. And this is one of the other things that helps create the mega tsunamis in the major event. If the moon halves its distance to the earth, the tides, the waves will be absolutely phenomenal. And this is something that I would say less than three or 4% of the observers actually know about. Uh, the only reason I know about it is because I'm friends with the guy who runs leadscoundin.com. Uh, last question, and this is one we've had before, we've gone over before, but always helps to do it again. Does it seem like they're trying to distract us? And by they, we mean the people in charge of this planet. Yes, absolutely. And they're not done distracting us either. They're not done throwing curveballs and messing with us. Um, the worst thing in the world for them would be for the world to figure out exactly what's going on. And that actually goes for both sides, the white hats and the black hats. Um, for the black hats, they really do want depopulation. For the few of them who think they're Batman, who have the messianic complex and are really trying to save people, that kind of depends on they're not being panic, they're not being chaos. The world's still working in working order. And so, yes, there is a very strong ongoing attempt to distract everyone from what is going on and uh, 
I'd say it's going pretty well for them. Anyway, um, check the link below the video. There's a bunch of links below there. Watch the disaster series if you haven't watched it. Almost all of the questions that are still coming in months later are answered in that disaster series, most of them in the first video, the disaster movie. And uh, you also have links to our books down there to get one of those one-on-one -on -one calls if you want one. And uh, whenever you're listening, I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.